Hey, we're back live at Strata. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org, and uh, we're getting close to the end, but we got a lot of action left. Uh, we're here with Paul Dosher, the CEO of Lucid Imagination. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome Great to theCUBE. To we're uh, we're going rapid fire. Tim O'Reilly was on, and uh, it was worth it, it's, but it squeezed our time a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are on top of Apache, right? Uh, talk about a little bit about your product, uh, right. but I'd like to just ask, put some context to it. Dave and I cover the information governance market, which is you know the big HP, there's a lot of conversations, autonomy is bought by HP. Yep. Search is a big part of all this, real-time analytics. Oh, yes. So tell us about what you're doing right now real quick, and then we'll go and jump into some questions. Okay, so uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Lucent Imagination is a commercial open source technology on top of Lucene Solar, which is the most broadly deployed enterprise search technology, I would suggest, in the world. but. Uh, with thousands and thousands of customers and thousands of implementations. Uh, the business model for Lucid is to sell a commercial set of modules, if you will, on top of Lucene Solar that makes it more enterprise ready. So we deal with issues around security, improvements, ranking and relevancy, configuration to make the you know, uh, uh, applications easier to manage. And we just recently launched, uh, it's called Lucid Works Platform, we just most recently launched that in the cloud. So, so now you can actually hook our LucidWorks technology and have full enterprise search capability into your cloud-based application. So what's the business model on your end? Because obviously this is an open source product, so right. obviously with open source is always the pure open source. Yep. Are you going to go like Cloudera? You do consulting around it, services? How is, is it, uh, so how are you guys going to The primary revenue it? driver is recurring license on the commercial product. Got it, okay. And, and we do have services and support. We do have a full support uh, for solar, so if somebody wants to implement solar, we have, of the 20 uh, 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 primary committee members from Apache, we employ seven of them. So we have a wealth of expertise inside the company of, of Lucene Solar, guys that actually have developed the product and, and are primary committers to the product. You know, Apache has just been such a successful community over the years, going way back in the days when I was tinkering around with uh, web servers back when the web hit the scene, but now it's so great. Um, uh, Abi Mehta from Traseda was talking about you guys, about he thinks that the killer app is text-based search within a massive amounts of analytic data. So I'm gonna what's your buy comment him a on beer. that? What's uh, your <laughs> comment on that? So he mentioned you guys, the scene. So yeah, yeah. I mean, very pro you guys, and he's obviously doing a really cool financial application, Traseda is doing that. So yes. what's your perspective on his comment, and could you elaborate why is that a killer app, and uh, what's happening? So uh, th the reason why, uh, you're right. So first of all, they're all, they're all Apache. You know, you take a dupe and you put Lucene Solar on top of it and it's all inside the Apache family, which is great. But more importantly, what Lucene Solar provides is the ability to scale to the size of Hadoop. So you don't need any intermediary data sources. You don't need to ETL information out of Hadoop to get it into an intermediate data store in order to run traditional BI you know, technology on top of it. You can actually just run a map reduce job, support or sponsor an index inside of Lucene Solar and then do real time analytics right off of that index. So it scales to the size of Hadoop, it's as adaptable and flexible as Hadoop is, and it deals with unstructured content. Because again, the, the paradigm that people come into these applications with is I'm dealing with structured text or structured information, you know, uh, numbers. Whereas, as, as Gartner says, 80% or so of the information that's inside the enterprise is unstructured. And so now what we see is we see an evolution of enterprise search where it's starting to overlap with business intelligence and starting to provide analytical applications or a platform to develop those applications where you can actually integrate structured and unstructured content within the same user interface. Can you give us an example of a use case where you can, because that was very cool, just give us an example of that application. Absolutely, so you look at a traditional customer support application. Right, you call up a customer support person and in today's enterprises, they tr traditionally have to open up somewhere between six and 12 applications in order to understand the context of your relationship. Like you go to Comcast or something, right? You could have uh, uh, voice, you could have internet, you could have cable TV, et cetera, et cetera, right? Well, when you take enterprise search technology and the ability to integrate content across the broad spectrum of the different applications that would identify a customer relationship, you can actually now take all of that and integrate it into one index and then you build an application on top of it that actually displays all that information from a portal, and now you can do natural language query. So you can search based on the customer name, their address, their number, whatever it is that they want, and you can not only see the full and total relationship that you have, but any you know, peculiarities, or if there's an issue with the local router or whatever, 
So I, what I think is eventually going to happen, does that answer the question? In terms yeah, of yeah the customer app? And I think what's going to happen, where this is going is there's so much volume of information now that's coming you know, into the enterprise and into users where you see that most of the traditional business intelligence applications are all based on a pull model. People have to know what reports they want or know what information they want. I think the volume of information is getting so big that eventually this paradigm is going to shift and you're now going to start to see more of a push model. And enterprise search technology provides that opportunity because you integrate enterprise search with machine learning capabilities like Mahout, and now you're able to build recommendation engines and triggers where you can actually start to push information to people based on their role in the company, et cetera. And the whole mindset is, you talked about you know, unstructured data being the dominant um, you know, ca characteristic of, of data today, but the whole mindset has changed. You know, I remember the you know, mid-2000s, the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure and email archiving and you know, using things like search to, f you know, to help with e-discovery and things yeah. like that, and now it's, the example you gave is you know, customer service, more value oriented, but is there a way in which you can help solve some of those traditional problems as well? You see those use cases well, like e-discovery e or other sort of legal compliance. If, if you look under most e-discovery applications, the foundation is search. Okay, so what you do is you take a search capability and we actually power a lot of the e-discovery ones because at the end of the day what you're doing is you're allowing an attorney, right, or somebody to be able to query a corpus of information, whether it's legal documents or emails or whatever, and they now have to raise all the ones that are relevant to the particular case. The application on top of it deals with aging, deals with accessibility, deals with sort of locking it up so that you can then present it in a court of law with all the restrictions that are required. But fundamentally, it all starts with the search application. So I have a question about that, because, uh, because, because discovery is volume driven, right? In other words, the more data I have, the more I got to pay my lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, and search is kind of this blunt instrument that we've been using. You know, right. You know, and lawyers love it. Right. You know, the, the general counsel of Pfizer might not love it so much. So, is there a, is there any are there any uh, uh, developments in terms of classification to be able to extract more value? Maybe, maybe uh, uh, reduce the size of that corpus of data uh, in a way that I don't have to troll through so much. Or is it just a function of technologies and and scale out are so fast now and and, and hardware is so cheap that that doesn't matter. So so. It, it, I'm going to come back, I'm sort of going to come around to that question. What most people are familiar with the search is what you do on the internet, which, right, you type into Google and then you get this, you know, one in 10 million pages and right. you got to, you know, nobody gets past page number two. Right. What happens inside the enterprise and what, you know, traditional enterprise search technologies do as part of that result set, they actually provide facets you know, or categories that give you smart navigation tools so that you can actually start to focus very quickly on exactly that information that you want. And so in an e-discovery application, you are able to, uh, you know, to pivot on the information from multiple different directions to actually get to exactly what you want and do it in a relatively short period of time. Where the legal support comes in is to actually then go through each one of those documents to make sure that, in fact, it meets the criteria that has been suggested. So the technology allows you to focus very quickly and then from that point forward, of course, yeah, you're paying, paying by the hour. Let me, let me give you an example. We just, we just developed a prototype of a big data instance for an intelligence agency in a Southeast Asian government on top of, of our partner, Cloudera. And what we were able to do is we were in, able to index, and this is basically a lot of email traffic and then some other sort of uh, uh, unstructured content. We were able to index 12 billion documents and we're able to ingest 65 million documents a minute. And now we're able to then turn that over to the analysts so they can do natural language queries on that information and they can get sub-second response time across that entire big data corpus and now start to be able to connect and intersect all that intelligence information so they can start to try and focus in on where the bad guys are. That's fantastic. I mean, I think really excited by the whole open source explosion around the developers. And I think Apache's got a nice momentum around some of their projects. Oh, Obviously, do. Hadoop has been fantastic for them, among other things. Uh, my question is to ask you um, what you're seeing in terms of applications. Obviously, Dave and I are reviewed kind of early on when we kicked off Strata. You know, 2010 was, what is Hadoop? <laughs> okay, hey, what's Hadoop? Yeah. 2011 was, hey, this big data stuff is a real business. It's very cool. 2012 is platform stability and application explosion, emergence of applications, yep. variety, you know, lifestyle applications to, you know, big venture-backed applications, and then 2013 is where it starts raining money. <laughs> uh, for, for the startups and for the companies and for the people that deploy big data right. and techniques to drive their business or change their business. So my question is, what are you seeing relative to 
uh, your piece, which is search, a big part of that. Right. Um, what kinds of applications are you seeing emerge? So independent of some of the use cases, what are the key things you're seeing? That's a trend, that's real, that's going to be a growth area. These are the kinds of apps we see demand for. So, so if you look across all the different verticals, so uh, in oil and gas, you know, there's a tremendous amount of information, now, especially with fracturing and how that's creating a different dimension as to how uh, the, the oil and gas are, are uh, collecting data around their pipelines, a huge application, a enormous amount of information. Any kind of log capture information, whether it's your security logs, whether it's logs uh, you know, from your internal IT operations, whether it's, like I said, logs from oil and well, I mean oil and gas uh, drills. In the healthcare space, you know, patient records, patient information, tracking of medical uh, insurance, claims and things like that. It's a voluminous amount of data that gets collected. So in each individual vertical, you start to see where what used to be sort of out of the scope of reality or the data warehouse was so huge that it was really impractical. So now you're seeing this opportunity where they can start to actually aggregate this information and then start to build applications on top of it that produce real information and real business value. And what kind of applications is that encoded in? Is it, we talked to revolution analysts around R and around that area I was seeing. Well uh, see, what, what, what we suggest is that there's actually going to require an integration and, and this is one of the things that we're sort of converging on where you take search and you can maybe take R and you take Mahout and you start to integrate these different Apache capabilities and now we're able to build an application framework that allows you to solve a number of different use cases because you can combine search with analytics, with natural language processing, with machine language, I mean uh, machine uh, knowledgeable uh, you know, uh, recommendation engines. So it's the capability and the opportunity to actually use the open source technologies and now you're able to develop applications, sophisticated application platforms with APIs that provide a wide range, solve a wide range of use cases. And, and, and you can do everything from dashboards to just straight lists. It depends on what the, you know, the interface needs to be. So what's the most exciting thing that's getting you uh, jazzed up right now in terms of obviously within your business, but outside of your business, on top of your business and around you, um, what trends is, you know, keeping you going, wow, this is so amazing. And it could be something that come out of the woodwork. Is there new surprises? What are the surprises and what are the, what are the things that you expected and what are you seeing? You say, hey, that is, the, that is the coolest thing we're seeing. So the coolest thing that we're seeing, well, so uh, just uh, a little bit about my background. I was one of the principal founders of Jaspersoft back in mm -hmm. early 2000, right? And so open source was sort of a new kind of, that was the cool thing prior to the cloud and whatnot. So now coming back in as the CEO of Lucent Imagination, the evolution of open source and how viral it is and how aware it is. And, and I think I, I, uh, one of the analysts did a, a survey recently where 75% of the global 2000 use open source in some way, shape, or form, and Lucene Solar are in the top five of the ones that they use to build applications. What are the other 25% yeah. do? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't listening to those. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to be in the top five, you know, and yeah. have that kind of reach, and, and that's the thing where you see such a huge adoption and with, you know, uh, budgets being constricted and, and, and uh, IT departments putting more and more pressure on it. Just the opportunity to continue to use open source I think is extremely exciting and, it, and it's becoming even more, you know, there was so much concern about uh, the licensing and all that stuff is all gone now. Talk it, about the, really about talk about the entrepreneurship use. side of it, okay? Because you mentioned startup and that's really cool. Obviously, you know, now it's a different world now than it was 2000 even then, right? So, um, the data entrepreneur out there, what's What's, what, what's your advice to them? I mean, obviously you've been through the old way and now the kind of the modern way, and this is going to be an ultra-modern way around the corner. Uh, a whole new generation of developers and entrepreneurs are coming out. What's your advice for them? Learn statistics. <laughs> <laughs> math. <laughs> go back and study go back stats. And, go back and study math and study st statistics and study how to, I mean, I, I heard a little bit of what Tim was talking about. It, it's, the, it's the understanding of how to develop interesting algorithms to solve business problems and then your ability to test those. You know, I think is going to be where it's going to be an absolutely revolutionary way. Now that you can amass so much data in one place and actually, you know, capture it into a, a data source that allows you to manipulate it, it's going to be how do you intelligently then manage that and then how do you actually produce real results from it? And, and I guess, you know, I, I don't know, but that would be my guess if I knew statistics. Yeah, well, and, and with all that data, the, the algorithms can maybe be a little simpler than they have been historically. But um, Probably so. So. I, so I had a question for you. Um, what do you think of the Indeca deal? The Deca Oracle. 
Uh, your I, phone I, been I, ringing I, off the hook since then? No, 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 no. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, of course it, it you just, would. It right? just Why creates a, Not only does it set the comps in the market, it was right? I mean, that's, thing, that's right? fantastic. <laughs> but it creates this huge vacuum, you right. know, where I still as, a, as, a, as an independent company with this, the kind of use, user population that we have is just, it's phenomenal. That's like so a new chapter now. Okay, it really great. is. So we're, we're now, and, and I think what it does, it sort of cleared the way with the old enterprise search paradigm. Yeah. And now, as I said, enterprise search is, is evolving and sort of starting to overlap more with the business intelligence space. And I just see more and more opportunity for us to expand our reach uh, in the enterprise and to really provide some really value and mission critical applications across all the different verticals. So I, I think it was fantastic. I mean, you look at autonomy is the same way. Um, uh, and Decto is a great one. You know, Microsoft when they fast, bought fast. Yeah. I mean, the multiples on that are fantastic. So I, I'm trying to drive our company as hard and as yeah. fast as I can. <laughs> yeah, where yeah, are you yeah, guys? Yeah. Where are you guys located? We're located right here in uh, Redwood City. Okay, so. great. We'll have to come by and see you there because we that. need your advice on our data project. We have a huge HBase backend little app here that we built. Uh, I, um, I, I got a company that can help you with that. And we need to get some search, and we got to work on some coding and. Uh, we need some advice, so we might come by and knock on your door and uh, It'd be a pleasure. and chat further. It'd be a pleasure. Paul, thank you, very thank much you for, for your time. Paul, great meeting you. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you very much. Real I time search it. is a killer app right here. Apache has it all. You guys are doing great. Lucid imagination, great business model. Open source again. Open source is really on its third generation, Dave. I mean, really we were is. first generation, then you had the second generation. Now a whole new generation of open source. It's really exciting. Um, virtualization, open source, flash, big data. These are the these are the enables cloud mobile and social. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest. Watch these.